Hi, I'm Emily Gould, and I'm here with Merritt Jansen, who performs in Notes from Underground, and we're going to chat about her role. Hi. Hi. So this is, I imagine, a taxing role, both physically and psychologically, because I know you've been doing the show for a while on we, both coasts. <laughs> we, it's true, we have. We, um, we conceived it at Yale Rep uh, almost two years ago. And, um, and then recently, this fall, we did a run at La Jolla, and now we're here in New York. So it's been a, it's been a long go. What have you done to physically prepare for the part? Well, Martial arts? <laughs> at, at Yale Rep, there's a wonderful fight director, Rick Sordelay. And he was able to give me a very safe way of doing the gesture, which is probably the most physically taxing in the show, of hurling myself against this window. Uh, and that is a gesture that was written in the script. And so I knew that that was something that I had to work on, um, getting it to a place that I could, I could do it effectively, uh, but also keep myself safe and feel free in doing it. And, and he was great. He sh he, I did it for a while where I was, without even knowing, I was tucking my, my elbow into my rib and mm. um, it was not good. Uh, and he came in and, and he, with, in a couple seconds, was able to show me where I needed to position my body, how to hit really evenly. And so you can use a tremendous amount of force and be very free in your mov movement and be safe. I also wondered how you had uh, sort of emotionally thought about the choices that the character makes because they seem so um, like that physical gesture, I guess, not focused on self-preservation at all. How do you make sense of that? I would argue that they are focused on self-preservation. Yeah? Yeah. I think actually that is something that happens to her in the course of the play. Um, I think that gesture to the underground ma man at the end of the show, it's, it's exactly that. She has been through so much brutality in her life. And when he meets her in the brothel, she has a wall that is just so thick. Uh, and if you look at her text, because of course the first thing you do is you look at the text. If you look at the text, she has an unbelievable amount of ellipses. She, she'll say a couple words and then dot, 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 a couple more words, dot, mm -hmm. dot, a couple more words, dot, dot, dot. To me that means that she has so much inside of her. Uh, it, it's very similar to what the underground man says in part one, ceaselessly boiling up inside of him. She has that in her. Mm -hmm. And she doesn't know what to do with it. She can't get it out. And she mm -hmm. has no release. And and part of that is because she, she can't even reach out herself. And that's a step to receiving help or to taking a step forward in your own life is being able to reach out. Mm -hmm. And he, as brutal and as ugly as that scene is, I think the beauty in it is that it is a release for her that he is able to somehow give her. And, and by the end of uh, at least the, the time that we see them. Right. She's able to reach out. What attracted you to the role? I was attracted to the production. Mm -hmm. um, I think Liza, she has such heart in her. And she's, she, is, she has that ability to be governed by her heart. Sort of an intangible thing, you sort of knew that you would be able to embody this character, so you, want, you wanted to do it? Sure, but there were a lot of different elements. I, I knew that I would be playing Liza, I knew that I would also be used as a musician, I knew the, the other artists that I would be working with who are phenomenal. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it, was a, it was a full package for me, and, and the text itself, to be working on Dostoevsky's writings, mm -hmm. uh, for me it was very special. To, perf to perform the role of Liza, even if we have not experienced the brutality that she has experienced in her life. If you look at the more of the universal themes that's involved, or the emotions that, that's involved, the that whatever it is, disappointment, grief, sorrow, hope, uh, uh, realizing that you have you have compassion in you that you can that you can help someone else, mm -hmm. um, and that elevates you. Uh, all the uh, those are wonderful things to be able to to explore. Um, so I found I was 
very, very curious about her. Do you presume a level of familiarity with the source text, having a sense that people aren't necessarily filled with suspense because they know what's going to happen because they've read the book? But even the book can be ambiguous at times. Mm -hmm. um, in the final scene, what happens between the, the man and woman, in the book, um, it's a dot, dot, dot. Yeah. So even the book has ambiguity in it. So we talked a little bit about what attracted you to the role, but how did you first get involved? How long have you been being Liza? I probably auditioned for it two years ago, this time, yeah. And... Um, in January of that year, then we, we started readings, even before we got into the rehearsal room, and then in February we started rehearsing. Um, so, yeah, that'll be two years this February. And you mentioned that you also are a musician, and you play music yeah, during Yeah, I love music. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I really love it. And Robert is, the director, he... He has such a f wonderful way of incorporating music into productions and, and using actors as both musicians and actors is something that I, I really love. So Have you done it before? I, in, a, in another production that I worked on with him, um, Britannicus, he had me playing keyboards. Uh, and and I, I played banjo um, at a, a production of Twelfth Night that I did. Banjo. Yes, wow. at the Not end of it, at the final song, we play played banjo, banjo, <laughs> banjo and um, fingerstyle guitar and uh, and keys or piano. Oh wow! So that's very impressive. Yeah, I, oh well, I love it. It keeps me sane. Are you looking forward to leaving the role behind? Are you like wanting to sink your teeth into it even more after two years? Yeah, it is. I feel very lucky that this is a production that's gone on. Um, it just keeps growing and expanding, and we as a company, you know, we're such a small crew, and and our own friendships just they strengthen as time goes on, and that affects the work, and it it's a, it's been a very beautiful process. So if this is the end, no, I'll be sad. It'd be wonderful to have it go on somewhere else.